This is the Sin Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, and welcome to this week's edition of the Pit Stop, where we're here to talk about our favorite sport, hobby, common interest, that being sim racing and covering all the stories that have gone on in the last week. This is the February 26th edition. I can't believe we're already through the second month of 2021. Time flies when you're having fun. So I hope you've had a good week so far. I hope this show's kicking off a good weekend for you. Happy Friday to everybody out there. And of course, we have a wonderful weekend of sim racing coming up for myself and the sim pit community and hopefully for anybody out there watching the show. So uh, actually looking at that thumbnail that we've got there, we're going to talk about that. I see the sim pit racing team is back in action. We'll talk about that in just a moment here. So what is going on in sim racing? Starting off in the Porsche Tag Heuer Esports Super Cup. They had their latest race at Road Atlanta, and it was Josh Rogers who benefited from a last lap tussle. Oh, there's some of the tussle. Uh, looks like, uh, what, Tommy uh, Harper boat drive last lap contact between Mitchell DeJong and Kevin Ellis Jr., um, so that's what we're looking at there with uh, Rogers going on to take the win at uh, at Road uh, Atlanta. Sorry about that. Uh, Road Atlanta. So it looks like Josh Rogers wins the race uh, with Tommy Osgard coming in second, Kevin Ellis coming in third, Max Benicky in fourth, Graham Carroll in sixth. Just looking at some of my uh, notables. Mitchell DeJong all the way back to 14th. Holzman, Patrick Holzman, 15th. Jeremy Boodaloop, 17th. Sebastian Job, 18th. Um, so, looks like exciting stuff going on there in the biggest road racing championship on iRacing. Also at iRacing, just a heads up, this weekend is the return of the Bathurst 12-hour. This will be the second gigantic team event on iRacing for 2021 after... Daytona. Uh, I know the Sim Pit has a team running there. We'll talk about that in just one second. So Mount Panorama. Uh, racing does start, so they're doing four splits. Um, I'm not sure how that plays out. I remember the first time that our team ran when they were running multiple splits, and we ran on the Friday night race because uh, it really worked well for a lot of our team to then find out that that was like not the big race. The big race was the Saturday morning race. So Saturday morning race is still happening, but then there's a Saturday afternoon and a Saturday evening. So four different start times for this one. Uh, the race is going to feature seven different cars broken into, what, three different classes? You got the BMW GT3 Proto, Lamborghini Huracan GT3 Evo, uh, both released from December. They're going to, oh, it's a single class, but seven car makes. I'm sorry. Sorry about that. Um, very sorry about that. Let's get that clear. Single car, seven car makes within that single class. Uh, so those two new cars, the BMW GT uh, M4 GT3 and the Huracan GT3, will be joining the R Audi R8, the Ferrari 488, the Ford GT, the McLaren MP4, and the Mercedes AMG. Uh, I believe our team are running the BMW M4 GT3. So uh, good luck to the Sim Pit team. I also want to throw a shout out to the B team. I doubt they're watching. The B team made up of a lot of the guys that I run Lemons and Lucky Dog with. Uh, team Chodis. Team Chodis is going to be running in their first online event as a team. And they're going to be running in the Bathurst tomorrow as well. Anyway, uh, I got this right here. So here is the Sim Pit Racing team. Uh, we will be streaming. I'm not going to be in the race this time around, but streaming starts. They're running on the 7 a.m., uh, well, 4 a.m. my time, start time tomorrow. 12 p.m. GMT is when we will be live at Sim Pit Live on YouTube, as well as KA Sim Racing. That's Amir Assad, Director of Racing Operations for the Sim Pit. Amir Assad, he'll be streaming on his channel, KA Sim Racing, as well as I believe Devin's streaming on Sim Pit Live. Might be Amir on... Both. I don't even know. Uh, 4 a.m. start time for a 12-hour race. So good luck, congratulations, and thank you guys for representing the Sim Pit. I appreciate that a ton. Also coming to us from iRacing, uh, Keegan Lay scores his first eNASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series win of 2021 at Homestead. So congratulations to Keegan. Uh, 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 yeah, Keegan, sorry, sorry. A uh, nice looking shot there. The racing action. There's the full grid. And it was uh, Leahy over uh, 
Ryan Lusa with Chris Sherborn, Sherburn sitting in third. Michael Conti back in tenth. Mitchell DeJong. Can you believe this? Look at this. Mitchell DeJong finishes 11th in the best of the best. The best of the best oval racers on earth. Mitchell DeJong finishes 11th place. When you look at the best of the best road racers on earth, or at least one group of them, because you can make an argument of a few different handfuls of road racing groups that can rival this group. But when you look at the best of the best in the road racing on iRacing, certainly, and what do you get? Mitchell DeJong finishing in 14th. He was battling for the lead, by the way, just, just to be clear. He was battling for the lead. Anyway, um... Mitchell DeJong, on fire, amazing, and one of the best sim racers on earth. Uh, let's see, 505, Assetto Corsa. There was a hot fix patch for Competizione on the PS4 and the Xbox One. Fixes something in the career mode, some stability issues, custom championship race. So there was an update for the console users of Competizione, nothing for our PC unit users. And that was really it from a set of Corsa. R Factor. R Factor 2 with week number 8 in their competition system blog. More updates on what they're doing. BOP adjustments. I know there are a lot of things that went on. They've got their Q&A back for another round. As I tell you during every one of these pit stops, I purposely put the link to all the stories so that if it's a story that you want to know more on, my point is to get across the news, let you know what's going on in a timely manner and then it's really on you to go look at the stories that you want more detail so if you're really into what they're doing what they're doing at r factor 2 with the competition system is amazing give it more time give it a bigger amount of drivers and it's going to be a game-changing event for you know the, the first sim to to really in-house go after i can't say they're the first but making an aggressive move after that multiplayer market of sim racing. So anyway, the link is there. You can go read everything about it in week number eight. In addition to that, some big racing uh, starting to heat up in our factor. So we've got the GT Pro Draft. More manufacturer diversity, more strategy, and mixing things up should be more fun. More details soon. Um, anyway, they do have a link to details on that. In addition, and we're going to look at that in just a second, uh, we announced something pretty yesterday, that being what we just mentioned. Check it out here with more details. BMW Sim M2 CS Racing Cup is heading your way. So if we follow those links, we have this one. So here is the M2 CS Cup. Prizes, 500 euro, 250 euro, 100 euro, first, second, third place. Schedule qualification rounds beginning almost immediately. Races starting next month, and that's going to be in that BMW. There's the broadcast where it's going to be broadcast. And what do you need to start? Maybe this is something. Uh, this is open to all. In addition to that, they have the GT Challenge season um, with GT3 cars. And, and anyway, all the details to all this great R Factor racing. Uh, we talked a lot, me and Billy Strange back uh, on our Beyond the Sim cast, we talked way back then about wanting to see more prizes set for the everyday guy to go after. And, and, and you know, quite honestly, when I say everyday guy, we're still talking the best of the best. I mean, I don't have the talent to go win this. Um, it's going to go to some sim racers who are ready to advance to that pro level of sim racing likely but again some smaller prizes making it more available to the everyday joe if you're an up-and-comer in sim racing if you want to make the transition from being good into being one of the recognizable names in sim racing to perhaps get a draft spot to perhaps get an entry into the top group in whatever sim it might be through some of these smaller competitions by the way so all this is starting to heat up with uh, our factor. That's great to see. Uh, Project Cars, driving seat blog number six. And Project Cars, when was the last time we even mentioned Project Cars? It was ages ago. Anyway, see a preview of our incoming free track. What, what? This was just yesterday they posted this. Project Cars 3, GIFs and more at the link. All right, we'll follow the link. We'll go down that rabbit hole. Driving seat blog number six. And this week's favorite blog 
features the upcoming free track preview. And yeah, oh yes, that's news. I mean, I have the right date here, right? Yeah, February 25th, 2021. I'm like flashback Friday here. Um, anyway, uh, the hour and the power. Next week, the DLC, for pro the third DLC for Project Cars 3, along with an all exciting all Japanese lineup of cars, four of them plus racing kit variants, including the first a one-off prototype that's coming to knock your socks off. We got a free track incoming your way. This is the Lake Valley Speedway from Utah out in the USA. It comes with four layouts, and night racing here is spectacular. Uh, as is the figure eight and high-banked ovals. Get ready for some seriously close-packed stadium racing adrenaline. So uh, this is coming. This is coming to Project Cars, of all things. Uh, Dirt, they had a latest update. Dirt's latest free update is out now and features the all-new Junkyard Playground items. We talked about this in Build Up over, all month. We've been talking about them teasing their update with the free track and some liveries and some things. So that did come out two, three days ago at this point. I haven't given it a try, but you can get more out of Dirt 5. Looking for inspiration on how you use the new Dirt 5 Playground options? Head Discover to find plenty of creations using the two-tiered Italy arena and our slate of junkyard objects. So anyway, you got that going on for dirt. We have an interesting other article. I didn't write it about dirt. We'll talk about that more. Uh, Formula One, their Challenger Cup is underway. And after the first six races, they called this after six. I see it as event three. Um, Alessio, oh, oh, hold on. Let's do this right. All right. Alessio Di Capua. From the Haas F1 team is leading the way with 84 points. These are the guys trying to fight their way into that top draft uh, position for the big leagues. This is basically the minor leagues. In second so far is Nicholas Mateo, and Patrick Sipos is in third place. And these are the guys in the hunt to get into the big leagues of the F1 eSport. But you can see they're already with teams. I'm not sure what that is all about. A Gran Turismo. We, you know, we saw so many articles speculating on when it would be released in 2021 recently. I think we've had one in almost every show, oh gosh, since 2021 began. Maybe making it seven or eight times we found different articles talking about when, speculating when, Gran Turismo. Anyway. Oh, wait. Oh, I got ahead of myself. This is the wrong article. Hold that thought, everyone. Uh, Gran Turismo Sport is getting a mysterious update on February 24th. Have you checked it out? This was two days ago. While everybody is waiting for Gran Turismo 7, Polyphony Digital is now working on a mysterious update for Gran Turismo that will be shipped as soon as next week. This is from uh, on the 20th. So supposedly we've had that update. Have you tried it? <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Uh, as I was saying... Wait, nope, nope, nope. Here we go. Update notice. Here is the update. <laughs> so this was two days ago. Penalty system, sport mode, other improvements and adjustments are right there as well. So they did make that update for Gran Turismo. Uh, also, Nations Cup is getting ready to kick off. That'll be Wednesday. Um, yeah, so this was just yesterday. So on Wednesdays, they're going to have five races on Saturdays. They're going to have five races in North America region. Um, round one will be on the 27th. That's tomorrow. And that will be uh, Toyota GR Yaris at Fuji. And round two will be on the 6th. So Nations Cup is uh, underway as well as the Manufacturers Cup. Also same time slots, round one being GR3 at Interlagos. Um, hey, where's my... There's the one I was looking for. Hold that thought. Bring that thought back in your mind. So for the last seven shows, I think we've mentioned speculative dates on when Gran Turismo 7 was going to come out. Everybody forecasting quarter one, quarter two, quarter three. Everybody was forecasting 2021. However, here's an article from Push Square. Gran Turismo 7 delayed to 2022 on PS5 due 
to coronavirus. Okay. Um, confirmed via a statement on a GQ magazine interview with Jim Ryan. Driving similar will no longer launch this year. The full statement reads, GT7 has been impacted by COVID-related production challenges and therefore will shift from 2021 to 2022. With the ongoing pandemic, it's a dynamic and changing situation, blah, blah. Anyway, that's not great news for us, is it? Uh, another article here from Eurogamer, same thing, talking about the same pushback. So it's it's gone from speculate speculation to we know it's not happening this year. Uh, race Room, they had another little, uh, uh, the W, I'm sorry, <laughs> Race Room had an update yesterday, and with that update was the WTCR 2020 cars. We showed that teaser, I thought it was, uh, what I think it was, a Veloster, I think I thought, but it turns out it was a Renault Magani. Do I have to put the disclaimer up as I say all these words wrong? Uh, Veloster, Veloster, Magane, Magani, Renault, Renault. Uh, got them all out. There you go. Anyway, they are now over there and available on Race Room. Whoops, I clicked a couple too many. There we go. Race Room. So here we go. Race Room has been updated with the 2020 WTCR pack. In addition, look at this chain log, change log. So there were a lot of updates across the board as well as the introduction of that car pack. Um, they also released some photos, so we do have some photos of these new 2020 WTCR. There's the Audi in DHL colors. Nice. Nice. Okay, so, uh, and you can check. I have a link to all that as well, of course. All right, Fanatec. Uh, oh, Fanatec posted this on the 22nd. And I just, their post says, let's disclaim this, Sean. Huge respect for Bartos Ostalowski. Ostalowski. Sorry. Um, look at this beautiful video, you guys. I just love seeing sim racing giving people an opportunity to do stuff they wouldn't always have the opportunity to. That's one of my favorite aspects of sim racing. Ah, oh, it's wonderful. Man, if that doesn't give you a smile on a Friday morning, I don't know what will. Uh, Rick Botek, uh, big congratulations to Elvis Rankin. Uh, he was this month's uh, uh, Hot Lap Hump Day winner. It was actually on Thursday, last Thursday. And uh, there's a big congratulations to him. He's pretty unbeatable when he gets when he gets his wits about him. When he's on his A game, he's pretty unbeatable. SimuCube. All right, we got a couple things from SimuCube. So number one, they're still doing their... Get to know your SimuCube partner series. We're going to come right back to that. But this is the one that caught my eye. This was from two days ago. I need your guys' help. I hope you guys, I'll be watching the chat. I hope you guys uh, can tell me what's going on. So, what is this? What am I looking at? What is SimuCube missing? That's quite a teaser. I don't know what it is. Do you? Do you? It's not that. All right, you guys tell me. Help me out. Uh, get to know your SimiCube Partner Series Part 7. This time it's... Oh gosh, do I even say this word? Latiel Latelier du Simu. That's the best I'm going to do. Uh, check out this rig. So this is one of their trusted partners. And look at this. Oh, we talked about the Aston. Remember the Aston Martin bumper car? Everyone called it a bumper car? Anyway, uh, this looks pretty sim similar. The Simu Workshop has been developing and manufacturing high-end static and dynamic simulators for five years. First for simulation centers and now for sim racers, gentlemen drivers, and professional pilots. 
I like the word pilot being used. Um, anyway, so another one of their partners you can check out. I like this, them featuring companies they work with. Uh, Iberian Special Transport. They now have gameplay video number two to wet your whistle for you Euro Truck Simulator fans. So we have some images and uh, a video. And uh, that's video two. Where's video three? Where's video three? I thought they said video three. Am I missing something? Video two. Oh, it was video two. Okay, so there is the video of Iberia. Your blinker's on. All right, more for your o truck. That's fantastic. All right, a few more things to talk about today. What do we got? Let's see. Motorsport snaps up Cartcraft. I read, I heard about this. So Motorsport Company, the company Motorsport, snapped up, acquired Cartcraft. Street sees 41% upside. So Motorsport Games, a racing developer, on February 19th agreed to buy Cartcraft from Black Delta for an undisclosed sum. Cartcraft is a PC kart racing simulator. So Hopefully it'll mean uh, accelerated development for Cartcraft. That'd be that'd be great to see. So that has happened. Uh, another thing to check out: PlayStation Blog talked about the split screen chaos of "Can't Drive This." Hits PS4 and PS5 March 19th. Uh, we have some video. Here we do official trailer. No, there we go. Maybe. Rated E for everyone. <laughs> All right, that music's gonna get us in trouble. <laughs> All right, that looks pretty good. This looks pretty crazy and fun. Definitely looks like a game would be fun to play with your kids if you had kids. All right, so that's out. Uh, BMW, we, we talked about this. We showed pictures of their stuff, but there was this uh, article here at BSIM. BMW Motorsport commit commits to 2021 sim racing. I'm going to kill this Welcome music. Welcome to BMW oh. Today. My name is Joy, and today's episode is not about cars. Well, somehow, it's about sim racing. And to tell me more about that, I have with me Pia. Hi, Pia. How are you doing? Hi, Joy. I'm fine. Thank you very much for having me today. Tell me, what is your job in the company? By now, I'm heading the BMW Esports Marketing. That means esports gaming as well as sim racing. Okay, so you know everything about the sim racing here. Yeah, a bit. Well, a little <laughs> bit. Okay, fine. Tell me, what's the strategy behind the idea? Super, actually. Fancy chairs you have here. Yeah, not... Should I con... I can tell my girlfriend and she would convert it. You can All right, you can check out that video if you're interested, but BMW is all in on sim racing. Uh, comic Book Gaming announcing this. Hot Wheels Unleashed Racing Game has been announced. Oh, video is not available. So much for that. A new Hot Wheels game was announced this week with Hot Wheels Unleashed, scheduled to release September 30th of this year on all consoles and PC. Hot Wheels Unleashed. We're going to have to look for that and try to get a little more information. Another great story. Check this out. How awesome is this? Uh, this was posted in our news. I want to throw some thank yous down. Some, um, Tofi. Tofi was the reporter extraordinaire one of today. We're dropping a bunch of stories into our submit links for news channel. But look at this guy, 93-year-old grandpa driving his car 30 years ago in a racing game. So this story touches upon one of my favorite aspects and one of my favorite things that I tell people about sim racing, which is, you know, if you just have a love for cars or a car, I mean, like for this, is this is this guy getting back to go 30 years ago to drive an RX-7 that he owned 30 years ago. I mean, the guy's on oxygen. But what a pl you know, just imagine when you're getting old, being able to go back in time and drive your favorite car from yesteryear. And that is one of the things that sim racing allows us to do. And 
and I applaud this video and I think this just shows you everything and hopefully this is a a, a look at the sim pit in 40 years just so you know <laughs> congratulations grandpa uh, this is cool Kotaku uh, had this article here who sent this one in this is also Tofi yep Tofi a rare Sega R3600 arcade cabinet found rusting in North Ireland field could be restored. Look at this old gaming cabinet. Like, it reminds me of that PlayStation rig. Um, it's a whole pod. Just rusting away. Just deteriorating away in a field. Anyway. So sad. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, that was that. Dirt 5. Article here from Jalopnik. Uh, kind of giving a hard time. I didn't read the whole thing, but thank you, Tofi, for sending this in as well. Uh, Dirt 5's latest update, this is the one we just talked about, still misses the point. I really like Dirt 5. Codemasters made a good call on spinning dirt off Dirt Rally as the sim-focused off-road racing series let Dirt 5 go all arcade. We've, we've agreed with that, if that's the way things continue. For those who haven't played I reckon the huge... Anyway, you can read the article. I don't have time to read the whole article. You guys read it. Jalopnik, not impressed. Um, all right, another thing that just made me laugh today. This was this was a good one. Uh, this is also sent in. I had funny enough seen this. Tofi sent this in. Um, wow, Tofi, you lit up the channel today. I really appreciate that. Uh, when I say that, I we have a section on our Discord channel. If you ever type in exclamation mark Discord, you will notice that... Uh, uh, it gives you a link to our Discord channel. Welcome to anybody and everybody. We do have a section that is made for our patron group, but it's the whole thing is available to everybody, including the news section where you can submit news that you think should be on this show. But check this out. When controller rumble is not enough to feel. <laughs> this is posted by Teen Enger. <laughs> so, if you're not getting enough out of your butt kicker, you're not getting enough out of your... Uh... <laughs> If you're not getting enough out of your uh, force feedback, this could be the cure. Just rumble everything. <laughs> That's awesome. <coughs> that is awesome. All right, a few sim rigs to talk about, some sim pit business, and then we'll call it a day. Uh, baby seat. They make a great sim racing seat. I'm, I know you guys are going to clown me on this one. Getting him started early. Anyway, look at this. The guy just put his ba the kid's baby seat right in his rig, and that pulled him up. This is posted by Simpatico TV, and this gave me a good smile, so I bring it to you. Uh, you know, I've never built a P... I built several P1s for clients, by the way. I built three P1s for clients. Um... When I say clients, I get hired from time to time to do installations and consultation for people, building up rigs and things like that. Um, Anton Style posted this, and I just thought to myself, wow, I've never had that much room to build a P1. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> that was literally what I built a P1 in an A-frame attic where every time you moved, you smacked your head, and after hours of w working, you know, down on the ground, you're just sore as could be the opposite of that scenario. But anyway, um, this posted by 4 Action Hank. Lit. <laughs> it is lit, isn't it? That thing is all lit up. I love a couple of factors here. I uh, love the, the license plate. I should do that to my rig. I think I have a license plate somewhere in storage. And this is... Oh, that's so much better. All right, I'm going to go with, I'm really hoping this is a, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, 
<laughs> what do you call the backpacks that give you you water? A uh, camelback. I, I believe that's a camelback drinking system hooked up to his rig. Uh, there's a scarier option that I'm not going to mention that it could be also. Uh, uh, we have the Bathurst 12 hour tomorrow. Maybe you guys can figure out where I'm going with that. I'm not going to mention it. Uh, love the Rickmo Tech pedals you got there, though. That's the same gas pedal I use, by the way. That is my pedal set. And I love this gigantic gas pedal it and with like 20 inches of throw it's the most cool thing ever anyway lit it is lit oh nafer there's his crew chief there's nafer's crew chief oh i just love when the cats the dogs are bothering us sim racing it's always cool this is by naffer my night g29 finally arrived yesterday five days before his 40th birthday and someone doesn't approve me sitting in a sleeping spot. <laughs> I'm sure some of you can relate. And this, maybe just more ideas for you on where to hide your rig. I mean, maybe your significant other doesn't approve, right? Well, you could tuck it behind the sofa if you're double dunker. <laughs> nice job there. And that takes me to the Simpit uh, tonight. Tonight, we have the final race in the Simpit Oval Series. Look at this. We have a tie between Nick Boyd and Mark Michkowski with 275 points going into the final race at Rockingham tonight. Kevin Burrows is only 13 points back of both of them. I mean, well within striking distance. Those three fighting it out for a championship. I suppose David Clymer has an outside shot. He's 20 points back. There may be a scenario where all three of these take themselves out and Climber could win. I don't know if he had, could get enough points, but that goes on tonight. I will be streaming that race tonight on Simpit Live on YouTube. And then Sunday, we have the Simpit GTE League, and we have the final race of the season. We'll be at Autodromo Monza, and Gonzalo Perón cannot be beaten at this point. In fact, unfortunately, he can't even make the race on Sunday, but it's okay. He's secured enough points. He's going to be able to still bring home the championship. So congratulations in order to Gonzalo Perón on being the Simpit GTE e league champion and he's going to get that amazing trophy over there with his name on it i can start printing that one now and get it on the way to him so he won't make the race but i'll be there on sunday and then on top of that tomorrow we have the simpit patron race uh the simpit patron is a group that helps support the show speaking of support there are a few revenue streams that help the sim pit stay in business we have our sponsors i want to thank right now uh um, sim experience for our accuforce wheel i want to really thank our seat for our, our sim chassis they've been so good to us over the years uh as well as rick motek who have supplied me with some great gear and have sponsored the show as well so that is one uh the other is our patron group our patron group directly helps support the show we do a monthly patron race where we give away a special trophy and I broadcast the race. That'll be tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. on our main channel right here, The Sim Pit on YouTube. So that's going on. Uh, in addition, if you guys see my new shirt, you see this shirt? Another revenue stream for The Sim Pit is we do have merchandise and we have brought back The Sim Pit merchandise store. I'm bringing more items online uh, as they come along. Some will be permanent, some will be temporary. So like this shirt, we're only going to let this be on sale for, oh, it says one day. It's supposed to be one month. I'm going to fix that before the show ends. Uh, actually, we're going to make that six weeks that will make this shirt available to you, and then we're going to bring it down and no longer sell it. But that is another way you can support the show. Uh, you buy the, sh the shirt, and we make a little bit of money. Um, so you can check out that. That is at streamlabs.com forward slash live forward slash merch. I'll put a link to that in the description of the show as well. And then finally, your final reminder, tomorrow morning, starting at 4 a.m. my time or 12 p.m. GMT, the Simpit Racing Team will be taking on the Bathurst 12-hour. That'll be live at Simpit Live on YouTube as well. I'm sorry, both shows are on, on Twitch. I'm sorry, Simpit Live on, on Twitch as well as KA Sim Racing on Twitch. So be sure to tune that in. You got Oval Race tonight, Simpit Live on YouTube. You've got the, the Simpit Racing Endurance Team 
at Bathurst on Twitch, Simpit Live, and KSM Racing. Tomorrow, you've got the Simpit Patron Race being broadcast right here on The Simpit at 10 a.m. And then, of course, Sunday morning, we've got our Simpit GTE finale as well. Um, so lots going on. In addition, if you're part of our group, get into our Discord channel. We are trying to throw together... We're getting ready to do more Wreckfest. I want to thank Peter Stern for hooking us up with a server running Wreckfest and hop into our Discord channel over the weekend, maybe Saturday night. I could definitely see uh, Wreckfest, maybe Sunday night since the Bathurst will be going on. But that is going to do it for today's show. If you ever have a suggestion, anything we can do better, I am very accessible. Get in that Discord channel, exclamation Discord. You can send me an email, Sean, S-H-A-U-N at simpit.com. If you ever have an idea, a suggestion, you want to lend a hand, just hit me up and maybe you can be part of the team as well. Get out there, do some sim racing, have yourselves a great weekend. This is the Simpit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.